Question from October, November 2016, paper 21, question 6. A. Define electric potential difference, PD. Now remember that PD is voltage. And voltage, by definition, is the energy used per unit of charge. The PD in an electric component converts the electric energy to other forms of energy like heat and light because it's kind of broad type of answer so to summarize on your exam you can just say it's the energy transformed per unit of charge b a battery of electromotive force emf of 14 volts a negligible internal resistance is connected to a resistor network, as shown in this picture. R1 and R2 are fixed resistors of resistances of 6 ohms and 12 ohms, respectively, and R3 is a variable resistor. Now, the situation is the switch. This switch is closed and calculate the current in the battery when the resistance of R3 is set at zero. So this is the original circuit, however, the switch is closed. And there are two conditions here. One, the switch is closed. The other one, R3, which is the variable resistor, is set at zero. So there is no resistance in this section right here at the circuit. So in this case, um, the current is going to flow in this circuit, and then what's gonna happen right here in this junction? This current is going to make a choice. It's going through this resistor or it's going through a path with no resistance. So the current is going to this section with no resistance and go back to the battery. Now this circuit here is the actually the path of the current. So the current is going to be flowing through 6 ohms and is not going to be flowing through 12 ohms and since I have no resistance here it's going to be back to the battery. So this circuit is a simplified version of this, so you can see better what is involved to calculate the current. So using Ohm's law to calculate the current, so my V here is 14 volts and my resistance is 6 ohms. So my current is 2.3 amps. So again, with the switch closed, I want to calculate the current flowing through the circuit when this variable resistance R3 is set at 24 ohms. Okay, so now to calculate the current in this circuit uh, when the resistor is set at 24 ohms, so here is the current flowing the circuit. So right here, Again, the current is going to make a choice. It's going to split, actually, uh, between both resistors. And right here is in this junction, it's going to recombine, and we are going to have the same current flowing right here. So again, we have two junctions, this and this. The junction here splits, and the second junction will recombine. The current flowing and the current flow is going to recombine here and form the original current. Because this current is the current flowing through the battery, we can call this current as the total current. So total current, this is the total voltage. Now I need to find my total resistance or equivalent resistance, which is a resistance in value that replace all the resistors in the circuit. So my RT is 6 
plus 12 ohms parallel with 24. First, I'm going to calculate the resistance that is the result of parallel between 12 and 24. And this result, I'm going to add the value of 6. So, 12 inverse plus 24 inverse is equal inverse. So, here we have 8. So, 8, this is 8, plus 6, plus 6 is 14 ohms. So, this is my equivalent resistance for the circuit. Now, my IT is VT over RT, and my VT here is 14 volts, and my RT is 14 ohms. That gives me a current flowing in the circuit, the original one, of 1 amps. So, here, just a recap what I did uh, when the switch was closed is asked to calculate the current flowing in the circuit. Uh, in this case, through the battery here, mainly, when um, this variable resistor is set at zero. And this is the current, because now the current is not flowing through 12, it's flowing just one loop like this. And the second scenario is when the resistor is set at 24 ohms, so now we have two resistors in parallel, in series with this one, six, and then that way we could calculate the current flowing through this battery before hit this joint right here, which is one amp. Now, this question here is asking to use your answers in BI to calculate the change in the total power produced by the battery with the resistance of R, resistance of R3 change from zero to 24. So I arranged in this table the values of the current for each scenario, when the R3 is zero, which is 2.3, and when R3 is 24, which is one amp. Note that both currents are flowing through the battery. Now he's asking to calculate the change in the total power produced by the battery when the current has changed from 2.3 to 1. So I'm going to use the formula for power, which is equal to the current times the voltage. But because the, we are talking about the change in current, so I'm going to have, I will have to calculate the difference between both currents. So that will be 2.3 minus 1 times the voltage of the battery, which is 14. And that will give me a change in power of 18.662. And your mark, the mark of this problem is gives 19 watts. So in this question, um, understand that the current in both cases are flowing through the battery when R3 has different settings. That's why I can use this formula right here and uh, obtain the result. Another change in the circuit. Now the switch is open. Now the resistors R1 and R2 are made from metal wires. Some data of these resistors are shown in this table. Uh, for R1, the cross-sectional area of the wire is A, and for R2 is 1.8A, and number of free electrons per unit uh, volume in metal, and here is N, and this one will be half of N. Then the question asks to determine the ratio of the average drift velocity uh, from R1 over R2. So when this, this switch is open, the current is not gonna flow through this. So is, we have the battery here, so the current is going to flow just between both resistors, R1 and R2. Now this circuit just simplified 
um, the, the question when the switch is open. Because the shoe resistance are in series, so the current flowing here is the same. So what do we have the same? So this, it says that the resistors are made of from metal wires. I assume the same, right? So which means same row. And also they have the same current flowing through. The formula to calculate the drift velocity, we need current. This N is the number of free electrons per unit volume in metal. This A is the cross-sectional area and E is the charge of an electron. So let me calculate the ratio for you. So V1 over V2 is I over NAE, all these for our R1, and the 2 is I over NAE for our resistor 2. So this is just like to identify uh, top and bottom, I'm using all the information on the numerator about R1 and all the information on denominator about R2. Actually, I mentioned uh, before that R1 and R2 are made from metal wires. Uh, that was something that I should not say because it's not saying they're made of the same wires. And I said the resistivity is the same. So I will cross this. This is not a valid information. Um, so going back to the problem. So the current is the same. This is a valid information right here. And the charge of electron is also the same. So what is left here is just N and A. And I have a couple of informations here to play with. Okay, so this is what is left. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do some substitution. So one, uh, actually I'm going to do this, one over a n for r1, r1 here is times, and now I'm going to flip this denominator, which is a n um, over 1. So this is for my r1, and this is for my r2. So in this step, I'm just kind of rearrange everything so we can see better what's going on here. So A for R2 is 1.8A. And N for R2 is 0.5N over A for R1 is just A. And N for R1 is just N. Now I cancel A with A and with N. So now I multiply 1.8 by a 0 0.5. And this gives me 0 0.9. So that is the ratio between V1 over V2. 0.9. So that actually you need to write your answer. 0 0.9. A structure questions from February, March 2018, paper 22, question 5. State Kirchhoff's second law. Easy to memorize. So, in a closed circuit, the sum of EMFs, or the value of the batteries, is equal to the sum of PDs, or the voltage drop on each resistor. So, the sum of EMFs of a closed circuit is equal to the sum of PDs. Next question. Two batteries, each of electromotive force EMF 6 volts and negligible internal resistance, are connected in series with three resistors, as shown in this picture, resistor X, has a resistance of 4 and resistance Y has resistance 1.5. So calculate the current in the circuit. I can say that the total current, which is the current that is flowing in the circuit, 
is equal to the total voltage over the total resistance. Hmm. Here I have two voltages and for total resistance, I need to know the value of Y, which I have, the value of X, which I have, but I don't have the value of R. So I cannot calculate the current through this method. When I saw this problem, I kind of, oops, I'm gonna solve this. Because there is an important part of this problem that was not printed with this worksheet. And that's the part that is missing. So it's part of the problem actually. So I wrote here, so can guide us. The resistance R of the variable resistance or resistor is changed until this voltmeter in the circuit reads zero. What this means? Well, when the voltmeter reads zero is because here what I have is like a short circuit, which means that is just a wire like this voltmeter now is just like connecting this side here um, in one loop or the other side as another loop. So now I have kind of two, a separation here with those two, these two this loop and this loop separated by this line in the middle because the voltmeter is reading zero. With that said, I can not uh, use this pink loop here to close and use the Kirchhoff's second law to calculate the current. So how I'm going to define my loop uh, in this case. So I'm going to do this way. Why? Because if I flip this, this way, so the current flows from the negative to the positive side of the battery. So the current is flowing this way. So now I can calculate my current using Kirchhoff's second law. So look on just on the pink loop. I'm going to follow the current flowing here. So remember, this is kind just a line, like you ha have just a circuit like this. Okay, so my EMF is six is equal to the sum of my PDs. I just have one, I have four. And the current in this case will be I. So my I is six over four, which is 1.5 amps. The second question is asking to calculate the value of the resistance R. Okay, so I calculate the current uh, flow in the circuit. Now I'm going to calculate the the resistance of R, I'm going to use Kirchhoff's second law to the outer loop, which is the green one. Okay, so I'm going to follow the direction of this current here and make my loop going this way. And identify my EMF. So this is minus plus. So this is positive six volts. The next EMF is this one, again, negative, positive. So that's the way the current is flowing through the terminals of this battery. So makes my EMF also positive. So I'm done with EMFs. Now let's look at the PDs. PDs, we have a three resistors, one, two, and three. Now I'm going to write here, um, let me start with uh, X. So this is four. The next one is Y, 
which is four times the current, 1.5, plus this one will be um, 1.5 times the current, which is 1.5, and the last one is R, is 1.5 times R. Then I will have here 12 is equal, 4 times 1.5 is 6, 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25, plus 1.5 R. Okay, the rest is just calculator work. It is uh, 12 minus 8.25 is equal, divided by 1.5, so... The value of the resistor is 2.5 ohms. Next question. Resistors X and Y are wires made from the same material. The diameter of the wire of X is twice the diameter of wire of Y. Determine the ratio of the average drift velocity between wire X and wire Y. This is the formula for drift velocity, is current over the number of electrons per volume times the cross-sectional area times the charge of an electron. Okay, so because those resistors X and Y, they are in series, just take a look on the original um, circuit, so the current is the same. And also the charge of electrons on both wires is also the same. So now this is what we have left, uh, N, A, N, A. However, it says they are made of the same material. So the number of free electrons per unit of volume is also the same. So let's cancel this out. So now we just have area left. Okay, so the problem say the area of the, not the area, but the diameter. Now, remember the, the area is pi over 4 d square. So, pi over 4 on numerator and denominator, they are cancel out. So, I'm going to relate area just with the diameter square. So, on the numerator, the diameter of wire X is twice the diameter of wire Y. And now we have this ratio here. So all that we need to do is, this will be 1 over 4D square. And this is 1 over D square. And now we can cancel this out. So that we have 1 over 4. And nothing to flip here. And that's the final answer. Okay, I cut the answer here, I didn't notice, but this is the, the writing part that I missed from the last clip, video clip. So here we have the result is one over four after you cancel everything. And this is one over four as the ratio. The next problem, the resistance R of the variable resistor is now increase, increased. State and explain the effect of the increase in R on the power transformed by each of the batteries. How much should you write here? A good clue is the number of marks. So if you have three marks, means that you need to make three different statements about the same question. Okay, so the question is related to what will be the power transform on each battery with the increase of R. Now, this is a clean circuit, no colors, two fixed resistors here, the variable resistor R, and both fixed battery. One obvious observation is that if R increases, then the total resistance in the circuit is going to increase. From this equation for power, which is the voltage squared over R, so if R increases, the power would decrease. 
so as a continuation from my prior statement so then the power would decrease from this formula with the increase of r if you are thinking why we didn't use this formula here i square r to justify this statement we could think this way is asking the power transformed by each battery so this variable is constant will not change what is changed here is r is the resistance so you can justify this statement by using this formula in this case here the resistance is increases and the current is decreasing so kind we have two variables change at the same time so that's why would not be a good approach to use this formula instead this one we have just one variable being um changing one variable changing so that's why i use this one right here to justify this answer past problem from may june 2013 paper 23 question six define the potential difference it's the energy transformed per unit of charge so pd is e is energy over charge b a battery of electromotive force 20 volts and zero internal resistance is connected in series with two resistors r1 and r2 the resistance of r2 is 600 and the resistance of r1 changed from 0 to 400 calculate the maximum pd across r2 to have the maximum voltage drop on r2 this r1 the variable resistor resistor needs to be set at zero ohm so all the energy is going to go to this resistor why not using potential divider so let's say that v out on two on 600 is v in which is 20 times the value of the resistor which is 600 over the sum of two resistor now this is zero so that will be just 600 why did i have to do that i didn't have to do that so v out is 20 volts because if this is zero all the voltage goes straight to 600 ohms okay well at least approve that so for this one on your real exam no work needed to conclude this the next question is asking what would be the um the voltage across r2 the minimum voltage across r2 well that one r1 needs to be set at 400 ohms so that will be 12 volts now if you don't remember or are watching this video without watching the prior videos or we are not in my classroom so what happened here is that we are using potential divider formula so the output voltage is the voltage across the resistor where we want to to calculate how much was the voltage the supply voltage reduced so the formula is v in which is the supply voltage times the resistor where you want to calculate the drop let's call r2 because that's the original formula uh, over the sum of both resistors in series r1 plus r2 okay so i'm gonna keep the original circuit and i'm going to read what the next question is about a light dependent resistor or LDR is connected in parallel with R2. So what is going on here? Now I'm gonna get this LDR, which is a resistor that changes with the amount of light. So this is the LDR, and the symbol is 
this arrow over which indicates the light hitting on the resistor is connected in parallel with R2. When the light intensity is changed, the LDR changes from, so the LDR range here is from 5 kilo ohms to 1.2 kilo ohms. So what that means? So it's a resistor that depends on the light. So if the light is, the light is bright, so it's a loss of light. So the resistance is low. So the light here must be high in order to have this lower range. With the higher range is light, the amount of light is low. So it's kind of opposite. So light is low, resistance is high. Light is high, resistance is low. So it's a lot going on in this circuit. We have two resistors, they are variable. One is change from zero to 400, minimum and maximum. And the other one, the minimum is 1.2 kilo ohms and the maximum is five kilo ohms. So this is the question. For the maximum light intensity, calculate the total resistance of R2 and the LDR. So it's asking to calculate the equivalent or the total resistance between those two guys, R2 and LDR, when the light is maximum. If the light is maximum, the resistance will be at minimum. Okay, so how do you solve this? Simple. Get your calculator. So here is 1.2. This K is 10 to the third. Don't forget. PE to the third. Okay. Now this is inverse. Plus 600 inverse. Equal inverse one more time. So the um, total resistance between LDR when set at maximum light. And this fixed resistor of 600 is 400 ohms. The last question, there's a lot of going on here, lots of reading. The resistance of R1 is vary from zero to 400, okay? Zero to 400 in the circuit of figure 6.1. So the first one, first circuit. And in this circuit here was introduced the LDR and state and explain the difference, if any, uh, between the minimum PD across R2 in each circuit. Numerical values are not required. In the prior question, we calculated the minimum PD on R2, which was 12 volts. That's the minimum potential drop in this resistor, 12 volts. Now, the LDR was introduced in parallel with this, this fixed resistor. And the result here is, that we calculate as well, is 400 ohms. So how will be the share of this voltage between two equal resistors? So this here will get 10 volts and this will get 10 volts. So there is a reduction of the voltage drop on this resistor with this new addition. So here is my answer. The minimum PD across R1 in 6.1 circuit is 12 volts. With the LDR in parallel in the circuit 6.2, the resistance dropped to 400. And now R1 would have to, to share the voltage supply and will have 10 volts across, which is less than in the circuit 6.1.